Hey folks, today we're gonna to be continuing our series on rolling backup. And now it's time to look at ways that we can connect one chord to another with transitions. And so we can play just about any chord we want now, and we can play in just about any key that we want, but we wanna make that just a little bit more interesting. But here's what's nice. We don't actually have to make it that much more complicated or difficult to play. That's actually not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is something that we can play in any situation. So really all we need to do is be able to transition from just about any chord to just about any other chord. And that's most of what today's lesson is gonna be. So you'll notice that this lesson is pretty long and it's made up of a lot of examples, which you don't necessarily have to learn in any particular order or all that comprehensively. You just wanna learn the things that apply best to what you do. So we'll go over all of these transitions and we'll talk about how to use them and we'll give examples, but you're gonna to wanna to focus on the things that actually apply to the songs that you like. The songs that you like are gonna include the examples that you really wanna learn. So keep that in mind as we move forward. And of course, you probably already know this, but you can get the tablature from this lesson and all of my lessons in PDF format at patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. That's where I post everything that you can't find here on YouTube. So you're gonna to wanna to check that out. And please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to this channel. That's one of the things that makes these videos possible. So if you do that, I really appreciate it. Anyway, let's look at some of these chord transitions. The first thing we're gonna look at is, again, the key of G and the chord G. That's what we end up playing most of the time, so why not just start there? You'll notice that the basic pattern that we're using here is the same pattern we've been using for G all along, but when we get close to C, we're just using two quarter notes to set up the transition into C. And you'll notice that we use these same two quarter notes with basically all of these patterns. Again, we're not looking for something really complicated or really difficult to play or really flashy, just something that works and leads from one chord to another. And once you can handle this, it's gonna be a lot easier to handle just about anything else that I'm gonna throw at you. And I am gonna throw other things at you in the next lesson. So you wanna get comfortable with this first. But anyway, let's look at the transition between G and all the other chords that we've been looking at so far. So one thing you'll notice is that we're not always using exactly the same pattern for G. Sometimes there are slight alterations just so that we can land on the right notes to help us transition to the next chord. So this is where things do get a little bit more complicated. But that's something you're gonna wanna get used to because the patterns I've shown you so far all use basically the same roll patterns. And that's great because it's easy to remember them and it's easy to use them. It's a great place to get started. But the real music, the real bluegrass backup doesn't tend to use the same patterns over and over again. We use different patterns to compensate for different chords that we need to land on, which may start on different notes and different strings. There's a lot of different variables. So we're gonna slowly start to introduce some more complicated ideas, or at least a little bit more variation. And it means that you're gonna have to contain a little bit more information in your mind at all times. So we'll try not to do too much of that, but note that some of these patterns aren't going to be exactly what we're used to so far. And that's okay, it's actually a good thing. It means we're gonna play more interesting music now. And beyond that, if you're using the patterns from the first rolling backup lesson and the second rolling backup lesson and this lesson, that's really good practice for when you're out in the world just learning new licks because they're not always gonna line up in the same way all the time. They don't take the same amount of time to play them. They don't all sound the same. They're gonna use different roll patterns. It gets a little bit more complicated, but it gets easier to remember more of them. So take this sudden step up in complexity and things to memorize as good practice for what happens for basically the rest of your life as a musician. Okay, so here's where the video is gonna get a little bit tedious and I don't necessarily think that you have to watch everything that's gonna happen in the next couple minutes because this is gonna be the transitions from each of the chords we just looked at to each of the chords we just looked at. So there's a lot of combinations. So think of this section of the video as more of an encyclopedia of transitions that you can reference if you ever wanna know how to go from one chord to another, but you don't necessarily have to sit through all these transitions unless you find that interesting. I should also say that when I show you these examples for A and A minor, I'm just gonna use A minor, but it's the same patterns just adjusted for the chord shape A that we've used in the rest of them. I just figured we didn't need to add an entire another section for another chord since the transitions are the same. 
Anyway, let's just take a look at these transitions. Okay, so that's a lot of chords and a lot of transitions and a lot of patterns. Might seem like a lot to memorize, but you don't have to memorize all of it. You don't actually have to memorize that much of it because you'll notice that a lot of the transitions from one chord to another are similar between chords. At a certain point, it's not gonna be patterns to memorize, it's just gonna be different ideas that you remember work going from this chord to another. It doesn't have to be you know, line five of page three of the transitions. So that'll be easier as well, but you also don't have to memorize this information because you're not gonna use all of it. Going from G to C happens all the time in bluegrass. Going from E minor to F barely ever happens. It's just good to be able to do it if you have to. But if you spend the same amount of time practicing going from G to C as you do going from E minor to F, well, that's not really a great use of your time because then in the real world, you're gonna be going from G to C a lot more than you're gonna be going from E minor to F. So just focus on the things that you actually are gonna see in your musical life. And for me, that ends up being a lot of things that Flatt and Scruggs played, a lot of things that Bill Monroe played, a lot of things that Jimmy Martin played. Never really goes from E minor to F. I can do that, and it's good to be able to do because it does come up once in a while, but I end up practicing a lot of things that are G to C, or C to D, or D to G. But just take a look at the songs that you actually like, the ones that you wanna play the best, and see what the transitions between those chords are and apply these patterns to those songs. So just as an example, here are some ways that you can use these transitions to play backup on songs commonly played in bluegrass.
And don't forget, just like the other patterns that we've looked at, these patterns are, for the most part, modular, meaning you can use them however you want. If you only have one measure of a chord, then just use the measure with the transition. Or don't. You don't actually have to transition like this between each chord in a song. It's just something that you have the option of doing. So by all means, practice transitioning between each chord, but then try practicing transitioning between only some of the chords. There's a lot of different ways that you can practice this, and you should explore all of them. And if that weren't enough, we still have to talk about transitioning between chords in 3-4. Now, luckily, like the other patterns we've looked at, the 3-4 versions are pretty similar to the 4-4 counterparts, just with some small adjustments made for the 3-4 time signature. But that does mean that we have another tedious section of the video coming up where for the next couple minutes, it'll just be patterns from transitioning from one chord to another. So if you'd like, feel free and skip ahead for now just to see how we'll use some of these on chord progressions and songs. Okay, so again, none of this should be too surprising. We're using a lot of the same material that we used in 4-4, just adjusted slightly for 3-4. And you'll also notice that some of these patterns are a little different from what we're used to looking at, just to make sure that we land in the right place. And that's okay. As we talked about before, this is a good way to practice keeping a little bit more information in your mind all at the same time. It will take a little bit of time, but it's worth the time. And just like we did with the 4-4 patterns, we have to actually use these in songs to have them under our fingers. So if you've got songs in 3-4, then you're going to want to use these patterns to transition between chords. And make sure you focus on the transitions that actually come up in the music that you play. Again, G to C is going to get used a lot more than E minor to F. It's good to be familiar with all of them, but practice appropriately for the actual music that you play.
So the more that we look at these patterns and using them in chord progressions, it kind of becomes clear what our job is as a banjo player. We're just using this different material to play the right chord at the right time, and we have different tools to make things slightly more interesting. Of course, we haven't looked at anything particularly complex or flashy yet, but that's a good thing. We're just getting used to the idea of playing for a certain amount of time before going to another chord. So just like the last two backup lessons, that's all the material. But now you have to do the work of using it and memorizing it and getting it under your fingers to the point where it's easy to use. There isn't too much more to say about how to use the material. It's the same way you use the material from the last lesson. It's the same way you use the material from two lessons ago. It's just different material. So it's going to be a little less comfortable right now, but when you put the work in, it's going to be just as comfortable as anything else that you've learned. But here's what's cool. Every time you learn something new, you have the experience of learning a bunch of other things before that. So you're gonna learn this faster than you learned the last one and faster than the one that you learned before that, which means you're gonna learn the next one faster than you're gonna learn this one, as long as you put in that time and you're really trying while you learn it. So if you're still here, if you're still listening and watching, do this. Take a song that you know and that you like but want to play better backup on and apply these patterns. If that means writing out exactly what you're going to play, then great, you should do that. If it means trying to play something based on these patterns without writing it down based on your memory, then you should do that. That's great too. Just do the thing that's actually going to enable you to use the material that you're trying to use. I know we always want to be able to do something, but when it doesn't work out, that's a good sign that we didn't go about it the right way. So if I want to use this material and it doesn't work, then maybe I try to do it too fast. Maybe I didn't study the material enough first. Maybe I need to practice one of the examples more than the others. Then when I try it again and it goes better, I'll have a good idea of what my process should be in the future. And you'll always tweak that, but if as long as you're paying attention, things will get better. So it's worth doing. Okay, so I'll let you go practice this material now. Don't forget to check out patreon.com slash banjo for tablature for this and all of my lessons, as well as a bunch of other cool bonus content. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, all of that stuff. That's it for today, and I'll see you next time.